You want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You can't handle the truth! Well, we're giving you the Michigan Sports Truth, the show that reveals facts, truth, research, and statistics, and never messes around. We lay down the entire truth about everything regarding your Detroit and Michigan sports teams, no matter if it's good or bad. No junk, no entertainment, no homerism, no coddling, no pop culture, no opinions, no shilling, and no fluff. Head over to our website at michigansportstruth.com, follow us on Twitter at Michigan underscore truth, and like our Facebook page, The Michigan Sports Truth. The hosts of the Michigan Sports Truth podcast do not take any suggestions or criticism from any member of its audience on how it should be run. It is up to the host to decide what they want to cover. They also do not intend to be any amount of popular in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Additionally, the views of the audience, right or wrong, do not reflect the actual truth revealed on this program. And welcome to the postgame edition of the Michigan Sports Truth podcast for Saturday, May 26, 2018. Sorry this is a little late. Now, now that it's all, uh, now that it's May twenty seventh, two thousand eighteen. Uh, why do I, why do I get to the the hilarious stuff first? That one is long gone. That's the first priority of the post game, the game itself. Tigers get humiliated by the Chicago White Sox, who are now. In fourth place in the AO Comedy Central. We'll get to the standings in a little bit. Eight to four, the final score. Francisco Liriano. Man. Got lit up. Uh, in five innings. Pitched. Gave up five runs. In five innings. Pitched. He's uh, starting to show the truth about himself, that he's over the hill, that he's already aging. In his last two starts, he gave up quite a few runs, including today. Gave up like four runs in his previous game coming into today. Tim Anderson with a three-run home run, wound up with four RBIs. Daniel Palka, of all people, chipping in with Two RBIs as a as an X factor f- f- for the South Siders for the South Side Shy Sox, and on the positive side for Detroit, Heimer Candelario with two home runs. That guy's not a home run hitter, but sometimes you don't even need power to hit a home run. So. That, that's that's the whole game. Itself, but um, Tiger's offense in general, besides Candelario, still, still not manu- manufacturing runs. And if if you want them to tank to uh, get to get Chris Illich out of ownership in totality. Um, then, then you need the Tigers' offense to continue to struggle. <clears throat> That's it. Unless you, unless you uh, uh, want the complete opposite. I mean, that, that's it. We'll get to the Yelliches next. Sunday at 110, Blaine Hardy, 0-0, 346 ERA, 146 whip. James Shields, starting for Chicago, 1-4, 462 ERA, 127 whip. A lower whip than Blaine Hardy, because Hardy's a relief pitcher. Tigers right now in third place in the AL Comedy Central at 22 and 29, three and a half games back of the Cleveland Indians, and eight and a half games back of the wild card spots. Now the White Sox 
now fourth place, not not in last place anymore in that Comedy Central division, 16 and 33. So, let's get to those Illich families, huh? The Tigers and Red Wings are run by a Little Caesars Corporation-run family in the in the Illiches that don't use math when needed, even if they knew it. We understand math is hard, and the Illiches know it too, but they don't care about the stats, just like the slapdick fans don't. They only care about signing, they've always only have cared about signing big-name athletes and some, some of the winningest players and coaches, like uh, Dominic Koshik, Joe Nathan, Juan Gonzalez. Magalio Ordonez, Pudge Rodriguez, Chris Weber, Dante Culpepper, Brad Richards, Todd Bertuzzi, etc. It's a it's a damn long list. They are the ones that make general managers sign those over-the-hill washed-up players that are already at the tail end of the career. The owners are the puppet masters. The general managers are more like the puppets. They they brainwash. They even brainwash them and make them believe that uh, believe all that stuff. And the general managers actually agree with it. They they even they don't even know the know. Or care about the real truth. <clears throat> they, um, they're the ones that make the general managers sign those over the hill, washed up players and coaches that are already at the the at the tail end of their career, like Jim Caldwell, Ron Gardenhire, Jim Leland, except for Brad Osmus, who. Uh, was an over-the-hill player, but a young manager who uh, s still has not learned after four years. They they tossed him way too late when they should have after 2014 because they never won a playoff game since since 2013. But the same goes for the managers in baseball and head coaches in the in the other sports like hockey, basketball, and football. This is another. Re this is another main reason why the Illiches keep losing with bad karma and need to sell both the Tigers and the Red Wings. Also due to tax issues. In Jeff Moss's article from March 8, 2017. So, there's nothing right about the Illiches. There hasn't been for a long time. They are the most... Ignorant, brash, arrogant, stubborn, and overconfident sports sports owning run family in the history of sports, especially in our generation. So th this I can't sugarcoat this in any way. And I'm not supposed to either. It, it's just that simple. This is not. This is not a makeup story. This is real. This is the Michigan sports truth. The Illiches need to go. They need to sell both teams to owners that do care a lot more than the Illiches ever cared. That's it. That's all I've got. So, and that's all the truth I have for tonight. So hold on. It's now time for the National Sports Report with Louis Tenor. Yep, take it away, Louis. Okay, away we go. All right, we'll start on the baseball diamond here. And much to my dismay, the Yankees.
he's got clobbered tonight. The Angels pound him 11 to 4. Aria got the win and Gray got the loss. Yeah, my colleagues are right about Gray. He is, he is a lackbuster. All right. Uh, in the bottom of the ninth here, we got a game here. The Reds lead the Rockies right now. Six to five. Bases loaded and one out. Hughes is pitching in. Dahl is batting. This should be good. Bottom seven. Mariners lead the Twins three to two. One out, nobody on. Cook is pitching in. Pettit is betting. Top seven. Uh, Padres and Dodgers are tied at five. One out, nobody on. Oh, the Hudson. Padres came back. Oh, my. Hudson good. is pitching in. Margot is at bat. All the rest are finals. Red Sox over the Braves. Six to eight. Sickening. Wright got the win. Freeman got the loss, and Kimbrell got the save. The Athletics uh, blank the D-backs, three to nothing. Uh, Megan got the win, and Bullshit's got the loss. Rangers over the Royals in ten, four to three. Colorado, uh, Colorado got the win, and McCarthy got the loss. Phillies bounced back from last night's loss against the Blue Jays, 2-1. to one. Dominique has got the win. Bichiani got the loss, and Garcia got the save. Cardinals over the Pirates, 4-1. to one. Flattery got the win. Williams got the loss, and Norris got the save. White Sox doubled up on the Tigers, 8-4. to four. Santiago got the win, and... Loreno got the loss. That's right. That, that's the pitcher. That Hector Santiago, the opposing starting pitcher for today, he, he only gave up two runs in five innings pitch. So continue. Thank you. Interesting. It was a close game uh, through the middle innings, but when we got to the later innings, the Brewers just poured it on and just beat the living crap out of the Mets, 17-6. to Jennings got the win, and Ryan got the loss. Big time. Oh, boy. Nationals over the Fish. You call them the Marlins. 4-1. to one. Miller got the win. Ziegler got the loss. And Doolittle didn't do very little to get the save. Oh, boy. Rays over the Orioles. 5-1. to one. Banda got the win. And Cashier got the loss. Indians over the Astros. 8-6. to six. Francisco got the win. McCullers Jr. got the loss, and Allen got the save. Giants edged the Cubs 5-4. to four. Stratton got the win. Quintelli got the loss, and Strickland got the save. All right, so now we're all up to date with the scores, at least for now. We'll go to the standings, and they run like this. Some of us may be happy, and some of us might want to just throw up. So the standings... The standings read like this. And for the most part, in some of the divisions, it's becoming a runaway early. Case in point, the Red Sox are now uh, 36 and 16, have a two game lead over the Yankees, 32 and 16. The rest are all in a, are all in a dump as the Rays are 24 and 26, 11 back. The Blue Jays, 12 back at 24 and 28, and the Orioles, 19 back at 17 and 35. That's not even June 1st yet. Yeah. What a dumpster fire. Speaking of a dumpster fire, in the tragic comedy of the AL Central, it reads like this. The Indians, the only decent team in the division, at 25 and 25, have a two-game lead over the Twins at 21 and 25. Tigers, three and a half back at 22 and 29. White Sox, 16 and 33, eight and a half back. And the Royals, 17 and 35, nine back. My God. Yeah. In the West, a little bit better here. As the Astros are at 34 and 19, have a two and a half game lead over the Mariners at 30 and 20. The Angels are at 29 and 23, four and a half back. The Athletics are 27 and 25 at six and a half back, and the Rangers are 22 and 
32 at 12 and a half back. Ah, well. Down in the National League, the Phillies, about that, the Phillies are now in first place. I don't believe it. At 29 and 20, have a half game lead over the Braves at 29 and 21. Nationals are only a game and a half out at 20 and 22. The Mets are now uh, back on a sinking ship again at 25 and 23. Three and a half back, even though they are above 500. And the Marlins, 11 back at 19 and 32. Uh, Jeter, what have you done? All right. In the central, the Brewers, 33 and 20. Have a four-game lead over the Cardinals at 27 and 22. And a four-game lead over the Pirates who are 28 and 23. Cubs, 26 and 22, four and a half back. And the Reds, 18 and 34, 14 and a half back. Ah, well. In the West, the Rockies are 27 and 24. The D-backs are 26 and 25, just a game back. The Giants are 25 and 27, two and a half back. The Dodgers, three and a half back at 23 and 27. And the Padres, 21 and 31, six and a half back. That is, of course, pending the outcome of tonight's game, which is now tied. All right, so now let's take a look at uh, later today's schedule. And it goes this way. All right, your Major League Baseball schedule for uh, the 27th, which is later today, goes like this. Leading off in the early games for 105 are the Braves and the Red Sox and the Angels and the Yankees. 110 games, we got a slew of them. Case in point. The Astros take on the Indians. The White Sox take on the Tigers. The Nationals take on the Marlins. The Orioles, the Orioles take on the Rays. A pair of 135 games. Blue Jays take on the Phillies. And the Cardinals take on the Pirates. 205, uh, excuse me, 210, 210. The Mets take on the Brewers. 305, Royals take on the Rangers, 310, Reds take on the Rockies, late games go like this, 405, we have the D-backs taking on the Athletics, a pair of 410 games, Twins take on the Mariners, the Padres take on the Dodgers, and at 8 o'clock, the Giants take on the Cubs. All right, so now let's turn our attention to the basketball court. As, uh, well, it was a do-or-die situation for the Warriors uh, tonight as the Rockets lead the series 3-2. to two. It was close throughout much of the first and, and into the midway point, midway point of the second half, but then the Warriors just came out on fire after that, and it turned into a close game, went to a good old-fashioned thrashing as the Warriors ground the Rockets 115-86. James Harden, not too bad, 32 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds. Clay Thompson, 35 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. This means we have a Game 7 on Monday. So, that'll be, I believe, uh, 8.30. I knew it was going to go 7 anyway. I was right. Again. Uh, so, tomorrow we have another Game 7. As uh, most of you know, for those of you who have been paying attention... The Cavaliers will take on the Celtics. That game is at 8.30 on ESPN. Players to watch are LeBron James and Al Hortford. So, and of course, it's winner take all. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to I'm going to go down to women's basketball. That's right, I cover that too, folks. We had a pair of games in the league today. The Wings uh, crushed the dream, crushed their dreams. Uh, 78-70. And the Indiana, uh, no, the Connecticut Sun over the Indiana Fever, 86-77. Connecticut Sun, that's also close to a casino in Connecticut known as Mohegan Sun. So I get the connection. Kind of weird when you think about it, but, eh. Doesn't matter. All right, we have uh, three games on schedule tomorrow, and they run like this. Three o'clock, 
Uh, the Minnesota Lynx take on the Washington Mystics. Uh, 5 o'clock, the Phoenix Mercury take on the LA Sparks. And at 8.30, the Seattle Storm take on the Las Vegas Aces. That's the new team in the league this year. Las Vegas Aces. I like that. I like that. I get it. All right, so now we'll go to the soccer field, MLS. It looks as if LAFC and DC will end in a 1-1 draw. Uh, they're in extra time, and I think that's going to be the final. Uh, speaking of tie, Vancouver and New England played with 3-3 draw. Salt Lake uh, edges Seattle one nothing. Red Bulls and Philadelphia Union played with scoreless draw. Chicago over Orlando 2-1. Minnesota over Montreal, two to nothing, and the Portland Timber Timbers over the Colorado Rapids, three to two. Uh, there are some games on the schedule tomorrow, I do believe. It's only Saturday that's like the um, the real big day. And here we go. Uh, tomorrow's games are like this: Kansas City will take on Columbus at six o'clock, and that's it for MLS. Okay. All right, so now you're taking care of all that. So now we'll go to the news items of the day. And we read it like this. Well, to start with, uh, Kevin Love was being evaluated for a concussion, concussion protocol after colliding with Jason Tatum in the first, in the first quarter of uh, Friday night's game. It was expected that, that he went for testing, an evaluation to see if he would be able to um, continue, but it was ruled uh, earlier today, well, yesterday, Kevin Love, he is going to be out in Game 7 in lab with concussion protocol, and that can take about 7 to 10 days. So LeBron's going to have to do a lot of the work by himself. This could be trouble. All right, Tampa Bay Rays outfielder, Denard's fan and closer uh, Alex Gloom are going to Seattle for two minor league pitcher. Uh, newest Yankee sensation Gilbert Torres homered in his fourth straight game on Friday night and became the youngest American League player uh, to do that. He has now hit nine home runs overall in the season, but this was his fourth straight game. Angels two-way player Otani should be able to return to the lineup next week. Yeah, he's uh, well for pitching. That is, he's been serving as the designated hitter in the last few games. Leandro Ball to get a look at pre-dawn draft workouts. This has been done before by uh, the Lakers before. Uh, but the thing is, uh, who is going to be who is going to be that desperate enough to draft him? I mean, because you know his brother isn't so great either, and he's just you know what I mean. Uh, Warriors forward Andre Iguodala missed his third straight game with a leg injury. The injury occurred uh, last Sunday after getting tangled up with James Harden in the fourth quarter. Oh, uh, Kevin Looney. Started in the last three games for Ikodala. Um, we also have a big uh, race day uh, coming up as uh, the Sunday before Memorial Day. As we have the Formula Formula One Grand Prix uh, at eight a.m. Then later in the day, like about noon, the granddaddy of them all, the Indianapolis Five Hundred, and at six o'clock is the Coca Cola Six Hundred. Incidentally, um, to add on Kevin Love, at least, uh, the team said he was suffering from concussion-like like symptoms after colliding with Tatum in that game. That was in the first quarter. Ugh, my head hurts just thinking about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, as expected, Yankees did activate Greg Bird at first base and demoted infielder Ronald uh, Torres to the minors meaning Tyra Austin is going to keep his spot in the 25-man roster. Bird, 
uh, has not played this season, is undergoing surgery on his right ankle back in March during spring training. Austin was to be considered shipped to the Myers upon Bird's return, but the Yankees have opted to keep him thanks to his 23 RBIs and 8 home runs on the season. And Torres is going to triple A Scranton, a Scranton Wilkesbury, that is. Uh, all right. Uh, continuing on. Uh, Mike Sojus said that uh, we'll wait and see and get direction from the medical staff and from General Manager Billy Epier before getting back uh, into his rotation. He said that on Friday. Uh, then throw a light bulb se- bullpen session and then a heavier bullpen session. And then we should know to get an idea of when his next pitching start will be. And it should be about mm, towards the midway point of next week. Uh, continue on um, with uh, Leandro Ball. Team President Mike uh, Magic Johnson and GM Robert Panenka have been holding pre-draft uh, workouts with uh, on, on Friday, including with Grayson Allen of Duke and Kevin Hunter of Maryland. Mm. All right. Um, more, more here. We're here with uh, Span and Cologne. They are going to the Maris for two minutes because Seattle was seeking outfield depth and boost a heavily, a heavily used bullpen to keep the momentum uh, going after a strong start to the season, despite injuries to five starting position players, including Cano prior to his 80-game suspension. The Mariners entered into Friday night's game nine games over 500, their best start in 15 years. Seattle will send $4.5 million to cover a portion of the $13.8 million the Mariners took on to the acquisition of Span. And hello, through the Mayors, the Mayors had an unexpected 11 million freed up from his suspension. Cologne can become a free agent after the year of 2020. It's a long, it may seem like a long time off, but it's really not. I'll be 50 by then. Yeah. All right. Continuing on. As I, as I mentioned, um, I think I mentioned this uh, last night, but I'll mention um, again just in case. Uh, Indiana football coach Bill Valerie, who led the team in career wins, uh, passed away at the age of 82. Uh, he was underwent emergency sur- brain surgery after a fall that occurred on Tuesday, probably at his home. Uh, Indiana University confirmed his death in a tweet by his son, Kurt who is the head football coach at Indiana State. He really did kind of put Indiana football on the map because before the Indiana wasn't really known uh, for for um, football. That went to like uh, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State. Uh, Indiana State was never much of a... Indiana, Indiana State were not much for football. They are more concentrated on basketball. But he helped put Indiana football on the map. Which I'm uh, happy to say. Because, you know, Indiana is, is uh, you know, a big sports town. Okay, just a uh, quick, uh, just to see if I've missed anything else. Which I might have not. Okay, um, that takes care of my notes. So I'm just going to finish up on the, on the uh, baseball scores here for the uh, late games, and we read like this. Right now, top eight, the Mariners now lead the Twins 3-2. to two. two out, nobody on. Vincent is pitching in. Sano is at bat. Um, at the end of seven now, the Padres have taken a 6-5 lead over the Dodgers. Uh, we're going to the eighth inning now. Villanueva, Statman 
and okay, Sam is Alexander. Alexander is pitching, and Villanueva is at bat, and all the rest are a final, and that takes care of minus for the evening. So I will turn it back over to you. All right, that's going to do it. That's going to do it for the uh, post game edition for Saturday, May 26, 2008. Um, except for uh, Francisco Liriano being one of those uh, over the hill top named superstars that the Yelliches signed to the Tigers. The Yelliches make Al Avila sign to the Tigers. Uh, and uh, that, that's just uh, another, uh, the newest example of bad karma, which is the same damn thing over and over and over again. I mean, it's, it's, it's time for change. It's time for us to care more about statistics, a lot more about statistics. The fan base and a society have no dignity like they should have. They should have a lot more. All right, that's – all right. Uh, listen to us on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts via iTunes. Like our Facebook page, The Michigan Sports Truth, and follow us on Twitter at Michigan, Sport, Michigan, under, at Michigan underscore truth. Follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips. For Lewis Tenor, I'm Taylor Phillips. TTFN, ta-ta for now. The hosts of the Michigan Sports Truth podcast do not take any suggestions or criticism from any member of its audience on how it should be run. It is up to the host to decide what they want to cover. They also do not intend to be any amount of popular in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Additionally, the views of the audience, right or wrong, do not reflect the actual truth revealed on this program.